What's up, guys? No audio today. We're just jumping right into the episode. I wanted to switch it up a little bit and see what you guys thought about it. Let me know if you guys like the music. I'll add it back. If not, we'll just jump right into episodes. Uh, but welcome back. It's another episode of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, it's your host, Charles, and today we've got a great one for you. So I'm sitting down with my good buddy, Cold-Blooded Chiller, or CBS as you may know him. He's a wonderful trader, an excellent educator, and this is actually the third episode we're having him on for, uh, just because I love the conversation so much, and I think he provides so much value in each one of these episodes. We're going to be talking about a couple things today. The first is how to deal with wins and losses as a trader. And then how to kind of isolate yourself from other people on Twitter who are posting, you know, large account balances or large P&Ls. He actually did a really good thread on this. And we're going to be going through that thread tweet by tweet and kind of discussing each one of the points. We're also going to be talking about transparency in the industry, which is a huge topic right now with some stuff that's gone on. And then lastly, we're going to finish up with a couple charts, kind of show you what he looks at on a daily basis. He's going to be giving you a couple tips and tricks on how to improve your trading uh, and talk about his trading strategy a little bit. But the main focus, again, is going to be on transparency and how to deal with those winners and the the losses. Sorry. Um, But before we get into all of that, two things I do want to take care of. The first is that We are making that push to YouTube. I'm trying to get out videos instead of just audio. Uh, So if you're on one of the podcasting platforms, I suggest heading over to YouTube. And if you've already been watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button so you can get updated when new episodes are out. Again, this one's not huge. So if you like listening on the podcasting platforms, there's only a couple charts that we are going to be looking at. And it's not absolutely necessary. Uh, but I still suggest heading over for future episodes. And then second, I do just want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor, Crypto.com. These guys, man, they're one of the biggest companies in the industry and they are offering so much for us. Uh, The first is that crypto credit card that I've been talking about. You can spend your crypto and then also earn up to 5% cash back on all purchases which is unmatched in my opinion. You, know, you get one, two, three percent cash back on most cards. Uh, but with this, it's up to five percent cash back. And then also a couple other smaller perks like uh, they'll pay for your Netflix, they'll pay for your Spotify. Uh, you can present your card and get unlimited airport uh, lounge access. So you just show up, you show your card, they'll let you in. Um, So I think everyone should have this credit card in their wallet. They should be using it, getting that huge cash back reward. Not only this, but you can also earn. They allow you to earn on your cryptocurrencies. Uh, So for like the bigs like Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, you can earn up to 6%. And then what I think is more important is the up to 12% that you can earn annually on your stable coins. Uh, because right now, you know, rates are dropping oh so often. I don't know, I can't even put it into words. They just continue to drop rates. The Fed continues to drop rates, uh, which then in turn affects your savings accounts where you're earning less than 1% uh, and soon potentially could be a negative rate. So I think that this is a great way to kind of break away from that. You can hold these stable coins and earn up to 12%, which is phenomenally better than the less than 1% you're currently earning. Then the last thing that they've got going on that I want to talk about is the partnerships that they've recently had with these uh, it's like tax accounting softwares. Uh, there's three different companies, and uh, with tax, tax season coming up, I really think that you guys should head on over, check out these softwares. If you're a crypto trader or even if you've just bought and sold crypto, even just a little bit, uh, can start to become a headache to file your taxes. Uh, And on top of that, your accountants are going to charge you an arm and a leg for it. With these guys, it's cheap. It's easy. You plug in your trades or you link your accounts like your Coinbase account and they calculate it all for you. So again, 
There's those three big things that I talked about. If any of those interest you, there's a link in the description below. You can head on over, apply for that card, start earning on your crypto, and then get your taxes taken care of. Now, I know that was long-winded, and I apologize for that. Now, let's get into the episode with CBS. We are here with CBS. This is actually the third episode. You are the first person to do three episodes of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast. Uh, your other two episodes were phenomenal. I think a lot of people found value in them, which is why I'm having you back on. Um, so normally how we do it is you give us some background on yourself, but you actually did that on the first episode. Uh, so for anyone who's listening, there's going to be links in the description. Go listen to those two first, and that'll be some good background for this one. Um, but, you know, we can still talk about how you've been since that last episode. Uh any updates from you? Any new stuff going on in your life? Um, well, firstly, thank you. Thank you for the third time. Always, <laughs> always a pleasure to be here. I'm um, honored. I'm honored, honestly. No, 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 man. It's it's really good. I, I love coming on. I love chatting. So um, it's great. Uh, in terms of in terms of what I've been up to since the last time, it's you know, it's I, I kind of feel I kind of feel bad just saying like the same old, same old, because the world's changed so much. But um, you know, like if we go back to those simpler times, I was kind of still doing exactly the same thing as I'm doing right now. But the only, the only real change is that obviously from a trading perspective and from, from me being a scalper, the, the volatility is, is through the roof. So, you know, like I was, I was chatting to you, you know, earlier and we spoke about the way that other people are off work, um, you know, laid off at the moment. And my workload has just gone up tenfold. You know, it's it's an incredibly volatile and, and crazy time for me at the moment. Yeah, so I mean, that's kind of one of the perks of working for yourself and working from home is that, you know, for a lot of us, especially in this industry, there hasn't been too much of a change. If anything, it's been a little bit of a positive change uh, just with the amount of work that's getting done. Uh, you said you've been trading a lot more. I've actually seen a couple of tweets of yours where you're doing like 20 plus trades a day, which is absolute insanity in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I think on on Friday, I think I finished up at 62 for the day. Jesus. Okay, so blowing, blowing through 20 and tripling that yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, like on, and Friday was a relatively weak day for me. Um I, I, I spoke about this in a in a tweet. It was it was a day where I gave far too much back to the market. So it was a it was a sign for me to to go relax for a while. But yeah, I mean like the trade frequency has increased massively from my side. Um typically, you know, I would say on 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 what I would deem sort of typical market conditions, I am probably looking at taking maybe eight to 15 trades uh daily when i when i get the setups and um yeah as i said right now with you know like we've got stuff happening all the time and and right now i'm trading traditional markets so obviously i've got a great amount of influence from outside news so you know like we, I, i've got press conferences every day i've got you know potential huge news stories um releasing i've got things like unemployment numbers it's so, like there's so much that you know, not only with what we're experiencing with with coronavirus currently, but I've got all of those news events that are also tagged into it. So yeah, it's it's madness. Yeah, it's it's been insane. I'm not huge on traditional markets myself. I follow them, but it's not my like main thing that I'm following. I usually pay attention to Bitcoin price a little bit more. But mm -hmm. you know, over the last I'd say two weeks or so, it's been up 5% a day, down 10%, up another 8%. Yeah. You know, it has been insane, this volatility. Yeah. And, and that, that original drop off that we had, um, you know, when we, when we did the, the 50% decline and, and essentially Bitcoin was on, on that 20 million sell from zero, um, you know, once we had that huge volatility spike, we kind of kept that for the next few days afterwards, where we were just doing these crazy percentage moves. Um, so we were just covering this massive range. And of course it was, it was punishing for anybody that sets like limit bids, limit asks, because, you know, those big moves can just swipe you out for another three, 4%, you know, very, very quickly. So that, yeah, the volatility even on BTC just did not let up. It's, it was insanity. I remember 
the day it happened, I actually got paid by one of my sponsors. Big shout out to them. I got paid at like 3800 And by the time it had gone through and I had gotten it to Coinbase to get rid of it and sell it, it was at, I think, like 5800 And that was within okay, yeah, like yeah, yeah. an hour. It was insanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was it was crazy. And and um like this region of the chart here, um, so obviously this is this is Renko, uh, which is why it's not in, in a traditional view for anybody that's used to seeing traditional candles. Um this even this range here, this has felt really slow. So lots of people have been complaining about this range that we've had at the top, um, because it's felt really slow. You know, but in effect, it's still a it's still a three hundred and seventy dollar range, a six percent range. So this felt really really slow to us because we're used to all of this yeah right. we've been used to all of this so all of a sudden this felt like oh my god you know please end yeah, whereas 6% this was range. still six <laughs> percent yeah yeah so we were still we were still doing really nice numbers within that range but it just it completely tweaks your your mindset when you have those big volatility spikes it really does uh, so two other things i did want to ask about since the last episode was one you know how's it's your you had a son right it wasn't long before i think the first episode or yeah sorry yeah, yeah. I, I get my my dates and years mixed up here because <laughs> i'm talking worry. to so many people do you know what i think i'd be more concerned if you knew that accurately <laughs> than the fact you don't so don't, don't have to apologize for that um yeah he's he's six months old he's six months old now um, which is kind of a blessing in the in the current environment as well because he doesn't require too much. You know, it's not like having a toddler that, you know, I, we've got to keep the doors shut and, and we can't go outside, right? Yeah. So, you know, like he's happy looking at the same book 12 times a day. And that's, and that's cool. So, yeah, so he's doing really well. Thank you. Awesome. Very wonderful to hear. And on the flip side, you know, he still does require some attention, which gives you some time to get away <laughs> from the charts. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I mean, like that is that is the joy of the the joy of my day in terms of in terms of scalping, and you know, I'll I'll come on to that when we when we progress in this. But you know, I when I when I hit my target for the day, right? That's the enjoyment of of walking out the office, and and he's there. So beautiful, truly beautiful, and I feel like a lot of people are kind of looking for that. I know I I hope to have that someday. Um, so the last thing I wanted to talk about before getting into the bulk of the episode was. Um, on the last episode, we actually gave away a free spot in one of your groups, your educational groups, and we gave that to Lucas Crown. And he he has done surprisingly well with the information that he's picked up. Uh, do you want yeah. to discuss that at all? Yeah. So um, so yeah, you're right. Lucas Lucas came to us after uh, after picking that up as as part of the competition win. And essentially, Lucas just just took the information that was on uh, on the server. So we we I run a Discord server, which is where all of the education is housed. So I do sort of what I refer to as educational quickies, which are two to three minute educational videos. We've got YouTube videos, which are full length educational content. Um, we do live streams, etc. So. Lucas basically spent spent the month that he had there trying to absorb as much of the information as possible, and he he shared some pretty pretty awesome success stories on Twitter uh, afterwards, which is from my side as an educator, which is fantastic to see. And you know, I know for example, that I remember the last the last tweet that I remember seeing from him was with, was that he was long from about four thousand on BTC. <laughs> killing it um yeah which is which is unfortunately you know where where the apprentice becomes the master because you know that is a far better position <laughs> than, than i find myself in so um you know like completely hats off to him you know it's it's it is a it is a self-help <clears throat> option you know it's i'm not there to to spoon feed you trades and you know ideas for trades i'm there to give you the backing and the education that you need and i think that lucas is uh, a prime example of somebody that he took what he wanted he took full advantage of that month um you know and and hopefully from what i've seen you know he's he's reaping the rewards from that so it's it's a super positive thing for me and and for him of course yeah and it's cool because you know instead of just spoon spoon feeding him trades like you were saying he actually gets to keep that knowledge and that information that he's learned and continue to apply it even once he's out of the group i know a lot of these discord groups and these telegram groups it's 
hey, here's a setup. They don't really teach you as much. And so yeah. when you stop, you know, paying for the group or you're not in the group anymore, you don't have that knowledge to continue to kill it as a trader. Yeah, uh, there's there's always been that there's always been that element of reliance with with paid groups it, it's kind of like the whole structure on on how they operate it's it's making you feel as though you cannot live without that option that's how um, they fleece you yeah and like it's, it's it's the exact opposite it's always been the message and i've had like which has always been and i think i repeated this on on the first show that i did with you it's basically come into the group take what you want and and in the nicest possible way like piss off yeah because <laughs> i want you to i want you to take that information and apply it for yourself you know i wanted it's you know it's the old the old adage of teaching somebody how to fish right it's that exact concept in action yeah and then you as an educator i bet it feels fantastic i know when people reach out to me and they say hey i've learned so much from your show i've started this business yada 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 it's it's one of the best feelings out there and so to see him come in you know win this free month um and then just go on to absolutely kill it it's got to be a great feeling for you yeah 100 percent. you know <clears throat> my my background has been education so i'm an educator that's i had a business that was um that focused on educational consultancy prior to becoming a trader full-time so you know that is my background but i think that there's there's never been an educational field that i've worked in that's been more rewarding than being able to at least assist in some way. You know, even if I help connect the dots for people, I help iron out some of the bad habits they have. Um, you know, there's there's never been a field that I've been a part of that feels as good to allow people to kind of feel independent when it comes to hopefully making money. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a really powerful thing. Yeah, you've done a fantastic job at it. Appreciate it. Of course, of course. Um, you know, one other thing on Lucas was I remember seeing that, you know, he wasn't trading with a ton of size. And this kind of actually leads into my next question, uh, because I think he turned like the first tweet I saw was he turned like one bit or one Ethereum into like 1.4 or something in a very short amount of time, which is, you know, mm -hmm. a 40 percent gain. Uh, but he was like, you know, this isn't a lot. I understand that, but it's a lot for me. Yeah. Uh, and you actually had a really good thread on this. And it was about kind of being happy with, you know, the gains that you make uh, and not really focusing on the noise outside of that. Because I know a lot of people like to flex, you know, $200,000 accounts that they're trading with uh, and it kind of yeah. deters some people. So can we kind of get into that thread? Yeah, yeah. Um, happily, happily. Um, and, and, and I can already, as soon as you mentioned like the words flex, like I can feel myself, like I've had to sit up in my chair because <laughs> I can feel myself like yeah, digging my fingernails in. Um, yeah, the, the really important thing for me is the, there's a number of things that are, I'm going to cover off in, in this discussion that we have. But the first thing that I always like to kind of, uh, kind of just say up front is you know, like I'm not, I'm not a big guy in this space. Um, I'm not, I'm not somebody who has, you know, multi-million dollar uh, trading accounts. I, I operate and I trade full time, and I earn enough to pay my way, to pay for my family, and obviously our our house, our mortgage, everything that comes with it. So you know, I, I earn enough to make this my full time job and support everybody. But I'm not somebody who is sort of you know actively making thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a day or in single trades. So a lot of the a lot of the information that I was exposed to on on Twitter, I think it almost sets an unrealistic expectation. And it sets an unrealistic expectation in terms of what it means to be a trader and kind of, you know, like the reality of the situation. Um, and I think that kind of the thread that I did just wanted to start to touch on that subject for people because my my goal is really... I want I want people to take an element of pride, which is which is a great example in Lucas. I want them to take an element of pride in what they achieve in this space because this is like one of the toughest games in the world, right? So the fact that people can actually make money from this, regardless of how big or small it is, I think is a really, really important point for people to take pride in. Um, 
so <clears throat> to give you kind of the the estimate and this is this is like a transparent talk based on the fact that that's kind of my whole message is you know my my figure that i have daily is is around $500 that's what i would like to achieve daily and to some people right they're going to think well yeah that's a that's a lot of money right that's a lot of money to take daily and other people may think okay well, it's that's not bad you know it's that's okay or you know i earn more in my job um but the point is is that it kind of in the nicest way it doesn't matter what you think um it really doesn't matter at all it's solely about what i need and what my targets and goals are so when it comes to kind of being transparent about that number and discussing that number openly i think that it's a it's a good opportunity for other people to start thinking about like what is their target number right what's their figure that they would like to start to look at achieving so i think that's that's kind of point 1 um it's kind of around that transparency around what what is acceptable for you as an individual what is a significant amount of money for you um what is a reasonable amount of money for you and how do your trades what do they look like in order to achieve that yeah i think i you know it's hard sometimes when you see these huge huge accounts with you know multiple bitcoin trading at a time hundreds of bitcoin trading at a time and uh, you think you're kind of inferior and uh, maybe what's the point, you know? Yeah. Uh, but if you look at the flip side of that, there are people where they say, you know, $500 a day is an insane amount of money to me. Yeah. Like I would love to make that much. Yeah. And then you look at people who are saying, you know, if I could make $10 a day trading, that would yeah. be life changing money. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I think the fact that, you know, you've kind of shut everyone else out or off, I should say. And you've found your dollar amount that you would like to gain every single day is, yeah. I think, the first, I guess, step in becoming a full-time trader. Yeah, like I, I when I when I first started, I, I obviously, I, I, you need to be aware of, you know, what it takes in order to become a trader full-time, you know, financially, from a financial perspective, you need to plan very carefully. And there's also an argument that would say it's a dangerous thing to have a target, especially daily. Because you get then get into a position where you may be forcing trades, right? You may be you may be like down for the day, or you may be sort of you know a hundred dollars shy. So you think I'll take another trade before I close down for the day. And like my five hundred dollars is like an average. That's kind of what I would like to achieve as an average per day. Um, it's not a fix. Like I've got to trade until I get this. So there's a careful balance of psychology in there, and not kind of becoming reliant on that figure um but that figure the the key point is that figure is completely personal it's a completely personal figure and it doesn't matter if your figure is five dollars ten dollars fifteen dollars a hundred dollars a thousand dollars whatever it is big or small it does not matter it's about you as the individual and again what is what is a significant or a reasonable amount of money and you know the the example that I give, and I, I use this example all the time, and it's actually, it's, it's not the best analogy, but it, it serves the purpose. And it's basically, you know, if, if I offered you a hundred dollars right now for pressing two buttons on a PC, like, would you take that? Without a doubt. All right. And like, so what about if I offered you $20 for doing the same thing? Yes. Yes. You can go yeah. down to a single it, dollar and I'd still yeah. say yes. Right. So, and essentially if, if we boil down trading in the most simplistic way, that's essentially what's happening is when you're looking at your profit on screen, right? That is, that is real money that is there. And you have achieved that of course, by doing some background research from, from charting, from analyzing. And, you know, there's, there's more that goes on in the background. I'm, I'm well aware of that fact, but the simple mechanical process is pressing two buttons. Yeah. and receiving an output um, and it's about what value you put on that yeah and I, I think that goes back to that kind of number or that figure that you're talking about because like you are saying there is some other stuff that goes into it which is kind of the research that you do the time you spend looking at charts and then you can get into how much do you value your time 
and then you can kind of get a gauge for <clears throat> sorry what you want that kind of daily number or average to be yeah yeah so, yeah 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 so there's more there's more to this thread i'm kind of going through it now yeah. as we speak yeah i'll um I'll, I'll quite happily continue discussing if that's all right yeah please <clears throat> i, I um, love this thread i went through i read the entire <laughs> thing and i was just you know, it, it really changed my, per- I wouldn't say it changed it fully because, you know, that's kind of something that's, the, these things are stuff that you kind of think about when you're thinking about trading. Um, mm-hmm. But it was good to know that so many other people are kind of thinking about this kind of stuff. And it really, it really gave me some solid perspective to be like, wait a minute, you know, nobody else really matters. Yeah. Yeah, and it, that's that's the number one thing, um, which, you know, like it ties me into where I'll pick up from, which is, I, I always seem to I always seem to complain about Twitter every time I come on. And I and I have to fucking, reiterate. It's a shit show. <laughs> yeah, Excuse my language. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean like you're right at times, it absolutely can be. But I think that I think that the kind of the main thing for me is, you know, Twitter is a, an absolutely wonderful space if you use it correctly. But there are also instances where you have people who are sharing large wins okay they share large account sizes because it's all about building up an ego it's all about building up a brand it's it's all about image and when you look at these people as a respected individual on twitter because they have you know 30,000 40,000 50,000 followers a lot of this messaging starts to creep into your mindset so a lot of the targets in terms of, you know, the fact that they're posting a screenshot that has, you know, like three BTC profit, and then you look at your own, your own trade profit and you're like 0.0077, <laughs> right? And, and like it, it completely demeans your profit. Um, and I think that there needs to be a complete disconnect from what those people are doing and keeping in mind that, again, it's a completely personal approach. So for that person that's posting a three BTC profit, you know, that may be, you know, uh, their average, their average trade amount and their average trade profit. But for you, it's a different story. You may not have the same bankroll as them. You may have different expectations, right? You have to work within your own limitations as well. So being able to complete that disconnect from all of the information and the shit you see on Twitter is so important. And especially because like, Half of these guys that are posting, you know, they're posting the good stuff. Yeah. Right. They haven't shown you the three failed trades where they lost one BTC every time. Right. Because they only want to show you the good stuff. So you're seeing this completely, you know, like perfect world view of how they trade, what their profit is, et cetera, which does affect you. Like you, you can sort of, you know, sometimes sit there and kind of think, ah, no, like that doesn't, that doesn't affect me. But the truth is, subconsciously, it's there. It lingers. It has an effect when you look at your trade results. Yeah, so I think I think we actually talked about this on our first episode. It may have been the second, but I think it was the first. Uh, and you, you gave some tips on kind of shutting everything else out and kind of getting rid of the noise. Do you remember yeah. us talking about that? Yeah, it was basically speaking about, at the time, it was speaking about analysis. And yes, it was saying exactly. That, when you're charting, you know, you need to, you need to close everything down. You go and you go and look at the chart, you go and plan your trade, you execute your trade, and then you go on Twitter and look at what other people have said. And you learn from that. You don't use it to give yourself confluence or talk yourself out of something or give you increased confidence. You trade first and then you look afterwards and you learn from it. Exactly. And seeing kind of the similar situation where seeing those other people's trades does affect your yep. analysis yourself even if it's just subconsciously you might look at a chart and be like no it doesn't have any effect but i think it does creep into your back into the back of your mind and it's the exact same thing with size of the bankroll and p and l yeah. um you know yeah. you kind of and, hit and, it on the head perfect with and the... like a, a, another is um is is like when when we're trading crypto when we're trading btc we're paid in btc Right. Aside from a couple of exchanges where we're paid in USD, it's primarily being paid in BTC. And that also is an issue because when you say you're, say you're using Max, 
and you see your profit. And like I said, it's it's 0.01 BTC. Like if if ever I'm to offer you 0.01 of something, right? You're gonna say like, what tiny bullshit amount is that? <laughs> right? Like what? Like if I said here's 0.01 of the cake, right? Then you're gonna be like, well, why are you giving me something that small? And so the the fact that we have these tiny figures right in terms of 0.01 of something 0.005 of something also has an impact because the fact that you look at something and immediately associate it with being a low number means that it's very hard to attach the dollar value to it so if for example you were to see that in usd value and see that your 0.01 you know equates to 60 dollars then that immediately puts a different spin on things yeah, it's, I mean, like, even just thinking about it, like, even, you know, a lot of people are like $60, that's not that much. To put that into perspective, that's almost a full day, full day's work for some people who are making minimum wage. Yeah. And this is done, yeah. like you were saying, by pushing two buttons, if we're boiling it down to, you know, yep. simplest terms. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that I, I always have a big problem, and... um like just as a heads up for anybody, if if anybody thinks that they suffer from a similar problem or maybe now they're connecting the dots in terms of, yeah, actually that is something I maybe I maybe think about, um, or maybe seeing a US dollar would help me. Um, there's actually a really great plugin for Mex that you run in your browser and um it converts your BTC amount to USD and displays it in the MEX PNL column. Oh. Um, so you can immediately see what your PNL is in USD. It's di it displays it alongside your BTC. Um, so I'd recommend anybody anybody have a look for that. And if if it's something that you would like, I'll I'll happily link it to you afterwards, Charles, so you can share. Yeah, I would love to have that just for, you know, everybody. I can throw it in the description mm -hmm. below. They can go check that out. Uh, because I think that would really change people's mindsets. You know, it, it's funny. It kind of makes me think of, you know, when you're at the casino and it's just numbers on a screen to you. doesn't yeah. feel like dollars anymore. And when yeah. you're looking at 0.01 Bitcoin, it doesn't feel like, you know, a nice crisp $50 bill in yeah. your hand. Uh, yeah. It's just, oh, yeah, it's 0 0.01 Bitcoin. It's nothing. I can throw that away. Yeah. And that's 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 a really it's such a key point it's such a, like i have such an issue with this you know it's something i try and bring up as much as possible because um it's it is the fact that you mentioned throwing away is also a big thing because what tends to happen is if for example you take uh like i'm sure that everybody who's who's traded has been in the situation before where they flip flop between positions very quickly right there they think okay i'll go long here and then price moves against them so they close it and they flip they flip short instead then they close it again and they go back long and one way of of self justification for that is by viewing the low btc amount so you think oh, okay it's only it's only 0 0.1 like 0 0.01 btc that i've just thrown away that's fine like i can i'll enter another position yeah and so it it even it impacts the losses as well because the losses you can throw them away because the the value is so low potentially to you so you just think oh that's, that's done like it's such a tidy number it doesn't mean anything All right and then that's that so it's just as dangerous from the loss perspective as it is from not appreciating the wins yeah it's kind of working against you in both ways you you win 0 0.01 BTC you're like that's next to nothing it's not yeah. even a good win and yeah. then you're also like, ah, I can just throw that away because yeah. it's so small. It's crazy. Yeah, which again is essentially, you know, like if you take your your crisp fifty dollar bill. Yeah, right. You know, it's Toss like that taking that trash. and just exactly. Yeah, and you, you're never going to do that, right? And that's essentially exactly what you could be doing. I I don't even want to tell you the number of times I've just sent point zero one that exact number to an exchange, hundred x long. They're shorted it just because yeah. I was like, you know what, this is what I need to do right now. Yeah. If you gave yeah. me a fifty dollar bill and told me to just go toss it in the trash, I would freak the fuck out. Well well yeah, yes. Like 
Um, I'm basically telling you to go and chuck it in the trash, but there's a very small chance that the trash will then give you a thousand dollars. Exactly. I was going to say, if there's a small chance that, you know, I'm going to be able to dig into the trash and then grab, (laughs) you know, a thousand dollars, like you're saying. Yeah, exactly. I would never do that. I would never toss it in the trash or be like, I'm going to walk away with my $50 bill. Fuck you. Yeah. 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 So again, it's, it's a really good point is having a concept of what the btc amount and it's specifically btc because in traditional markets we typically have it easier because in traditional markets everything's completed in their native currency exactly so it's a lot easier to rationalize that amount and to appreciate that amount than i think it is in in a crypto space so if you're trading eth uh, if you're trading btc and when you're paid in those Again, it becomes very difficult to be able to appreciate and to kind of take on board what you may be doing successfully, but instead it kind of gets lost. Yeah, definitely. So again, with that plugin, if you can get that to me, I would love to throw it in the description. I feel like that's going to help a lot of people out and they'll start to realize, you know, what it is that they're doing on these websites. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, there's a really, really important point is, you know, everything that we've spoken about in terms of appreciation. Um, and I kind of want to take us on to it, kind of like the summary of the summary of that thread, um, if that's okay with you. Yeah, please. Um, <clears throat> so in that we, I, I quote the saying in here about looking after the pennies and the pounds will come um, from a from a British perspective. Um, and you know, that, that is incredibly, that is incredibly true for when we're thinking about investing and trading half of the battle that we have is in capital preservation. So it's in making sure that we're not pissing money up the wall, right? At the same time that we're trying to essentially get more. So it's a really important thing and having an appreciation for what you trade how much you make on a trade is a big step in having that awareness and that capital preservation. Because when we think about trading and we think about some of these amounts like our our 0.01, okay, this is where accounts start to grow and increase in size. Very rarely are traders and trade accounts made from the fact that they had one large win and that was it. (laughs) <laughs> they're very much crafted from the ground up it's the small wins that count and 100 percent. i think you know going back to the your target of 500 dollars a day you, you mentioned that some people don't like the idea of having daily targets but i think that really does turn it into a bunch of small wins that you can just yeah. continue to grow over time yeah and it's you know that's from my perspective, as I said, when I'm I'm a, I'm a scalper, so I am used to lots of small wins. You know, I very rarely get, I very rarely get a trade that is on for a con- considerable length of time that I kind of would consider as like a big win. Um, you know, sometimes I get those scalps that turn into that, but I'm used to locking in profit early and having those small wins slowly build up over the course of the day. And hopefully, if I'm fortunate, the markets are good to me, the wins outweigh the losses, um, and I end positive for the day. So it's it's about when you, whenever, if anybody here is thinking about, you know, how do I, how do I get that appreciation? How do I get that, that sort of understanding of, of, you know, profit and taking profit? I'm not necessarily recommending that everybody has a has a daily target that they look to achieve. But what's very important is that you look at your current trading balance and you determine what is what is an acceptable amount of return for your available capital because that's what you're dealing with at the at the current sort of time. So it doesn't really matter about your sort of economic status. Um, in in the grand scheme of things, it matters about what you're trading with and what your risk is. Yeah. See, this and, is this is sorry to cut you off there. No, no, there you go. This is I I'm very passionate about this specific topic because um, mm-hmm. I always am talking about guys. It's about the percentage gains, not the value of the wins or losses. Uh, you know, a lot of people will sit there and be like, oh, you know, it was only a hundred dollar trade, or he's only trading with a two hundred dollar account, or whatever. Yeah. And I always like to bring it back to the fact that, 
you know, even if you're trading a hundred dollar account, Making 50% on that, even though $50 is not a lot of money, the fact that you were able to hit 50% gains on an account is something that should be commended. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, um, you know, that's, that's one of the elements that's lost in what we, what we've been speaking about so far. And that's that you lose the self-appreciation for the achievements that you are making. You know, so I kind of touched on the fact that, you know, this is an incredibly hard thing to do. And when you do it and you are paid from it, right, you, that, sh- that is a celebration, regardless it of should be. if you think the amount is, is small or you don't want to share it publicly because you're afraid that someone will mock you for the size that you're trading. Like, that's complete fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I've, like I said in the tweet, right, if anybody ever calls you out on money, that is one of the most dickish things that you can do. Um, you know, nobody, nobody can call you out on what you trade, your trade size, etc. And in the in the group, uh, I've kind of had like a drive, and it, it's certainly not in like a, a dictatorship way where I'm like everybody starts sharing their account balance right now. Um, it's a case you of like, I, it. yeah, I I want people to be open about the amount that they are trading. And their wins. So, for example, if I've got a member who has a thousand dollar account, and he absolutely nails a trade and bags a hundred dollars, I know that's a really significant amount for him. Yeah, right. I know that's a significant amount for his account. So, the praise comes accordingly because you know that's that's a hell of an achievement. So, I want to be there in order to share that success, right, and to congratulate him along with the other members because that's a milestone. Right, that's a significant Huge. trade. Yeah. So, ten percent like, gain is massive. Yeah, and and all of that gets lost in the fact that if you want to keep it to yourself and you, and you're worried about sharing it, you also don't get to like have the congratulations for actually doing a damn good job, and you may not even realize that you are. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy how your mentality gets changed, uh, and that's come with I think this whole idea of you know posting stuff on social media. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it kind of got me thinking, you know, we're talking about dollar values and Bitcoin amounts. Uh, but I think this also applies to percent gains because, you know, yeah. you, see, you see people on Twitter, you know, flexing these 100 percent gains, these thousand percent trades. Um, and it's kind of discouraging other people who are making these, like I said, a fantastic gain of 10 percent. Um, so I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. It might just be the exact same kind of stuff we just discussed. Uh, but I did want to bring that up really quick. Yeah, it's it's really a case of, you know, understanding as well, like uh, how a lot of these percentages are calculated. Um, because these can just be like tiny, tiny bullshit amounts that are, that are you know, 100x and this person got lucky because they were waiting to be able to share something on Twitter. So it's about ensuring that the people that who are sharing these successes are doing so legitimately. And, you know, typically what we see on Twitter is we see the sharing of PNL percentages, right? And market price and entry price of the asset. And that's it. Right? Typically people don't share the size of the orders. Yeah. So whenever we see anything, they're always nice and neatly cropped to show the three key elements that you care about, which is what's the current price? What price did you enter and how many thousand percent? is your is your pnl currently sitting at right they're the things that grab attention um so i guess appreciating that you really don't have all the facts number one and secondly it's posted for a purpose and it's to get you to react the way that you probably are so i i did want to get into this because you kind of briefly talked about it (laughs) when you were talking about people kind of bringing up you know their pnl whether it be percent or the actual value and then account sizes uh, why do you think people are doing this kind of stuff? Why do you think they're sharing these large, massive amounts and these killer trades on Twitter? So it's it's image. Um, it's image and it's also from it's also from that um, sort of egocentric point of view because these people are looking for attention primarily. And like I've shared trades before. And I'll, I'll happily admit I'm looking for attention when I do it. 
Right, if I if I nail a trade, I, I damn right I want you want some praise. Want yeah. yeah, like I want I want everything. Retweet Fuck that social shit media, as well. it like, has ruined yeah, like, us. Yeah, so like I seek that as well. Yeah. Um. The the people who are consistently sharing and who are sharing kind of the totals that I would say are starting to become like questionable. Um. It's purely done from a perspective of trying to raise profile. Um. And. Like, I feel as though we're bordering on speaking about maybe an individual in particular. Yeah, so I actually did want to bring this up. I, yeah. you know, I've had some conversations with this guy. This was big news on Twitter recently. Uh, Jacob Canefield, I don't know if my audience knows who he is. I assume they do. Uh, but he actually was faking some of his trades. And uh, I, I was kind of confused on the whole situation. I was confused with his answer a little bit. I don't know if you want to get into this at all, because this kind of gives a specific example that we can kind of go into detail on. Yeah, I mean, my my problem with my problem, like with what happened, is I feel myself getting so angry talking. About it. I'm like, <laughs> let how it do flow. I phrase this? Let yeah, the, how do let I let it, how let do I it let this flow? Go? All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. be passionate. Um, he's he's undermining everything that I am trying to work to achieve in terms of community on, on Twitter and within the group. And the reason being is this is somebody who, according to the trades that he, he photoshopped and it's a direct correlation with the thread that I did on Twitter and what we're discussing today yeah. is this is somebody who made seven BTC legitimately through a trade. Do you believe that? Let's go with it, right? Okay. Let's roll with it. Let's let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that he made the seven BTC, right? And he photoshopped it to fifteen. Just seems unnecessary. One hundred percent. And it, then that was the point that kind of infuriated me more than anything was the fact that you feel as though you need to double that amount. And and I think at the current price of BTC, it was probably around sixty k anyway with that original win. A ton of money. The fact that, yeah, the fact that you salary. feel as though you need to double that, right? And that's what shows what a great trader you are because you pull 15 BTC rather than seven. You know, I was like, that was the thing that really got to me. I was like, it undermines everything that I've been trying to spread and discuss, which is you take pride in what you earn regardless of anybody else. And then you've got this one fucker who's deciding that 60k isn't enough and 120 looks better right and it just goes to perpetuate that thought process of i'm not as good as them they look how much they're trading with and it also goes to show that it like half of it is just a pure like dream right it's all just some bullshit created by them you know photoshopped and you know i think that jacob was a, a prime example of somebody that let his ego and let his perceived how everybody sort of he thought everybody perceived him it let it change who he was and the way that he sort of posted trades and, and potential you know capital that he gained from it yeah so he actually runs a paid group if i'm not mistaken uh so do you think it is more ego than the fact that he's trying to show these big trades to provide credibility to kind of funnel people into his group yeah i mean that's that's it kind of links into a a kind of a a wider and then more general broadcast on on that topic as a whole because i think that's absolutely what what was going on because typically the way that paid groups work on on twitter is you are seem to be very successful you are seen to post good trades with you know large returns and that secures you and that secures you people who want to sign up for a group and so for jacob that's offering a service that you know is primarily relying on trades and analysis albeit with some educational material in there as well um you know that image of being a successful trader and I'm like doing air quotes again when I'm saying that like being a successful trader, you know, that's, that's what he is trying to achieve. And the general broadcast that goes along with that is that typically 
anybody you see that is doing a similar thing, it's worth approaching them with a little bit of caution. And we see this across like the typical sort of like scam route that we've seen is people posting large PNL, gaining lots of followers, looking like they never lose a trade, just posting winner after winner after winner calling everything in advance, you know, hitting targets within 23 cents of where it stopped. Um, and then all of a sudden they move on to either starting a fund or starting a paid group. And it's the reason that paid groups get a bad rap. Yeah. And this kind of speaks to trans- transparency, sorry, as a whole in the industry. We've covered a lot of it already. Um, you know, are there any other, I guess, topics on or discussion points you want to talk about on the topic of transparency so i it's basically just a i would encourage anybody to to be transparent either in like your social circles with you know a lot of us speak to other traders other investors you know whether that be on discord telegram twitter and you know i would kind of you know look at being more open and honest about it because every trader loses you're not you're not you unique in the fact that you you lose and you may lose consistently. Um, you know there are lots of other people out there, and I lose consistently as well. You know I've had I had a, my Friday day. I was I think I was eight scalps, eight losers in a row. Um, and being transparent about it and having the discussion about it, the good days, the bad days, can only go to serve making you a better trader, because. There is no trader in this space that has a 100% success rate. Anything that looks too good to be true probably is. And trading is all about winners and losers. It's about how you manage winners, how you manage losers, what your approach is, what your risk management is. And being transparent is a really key step in accountability for the mistakes that you make. And it's also a really big step in feeling comfortable and feeling good like about yourself when you do something that deserves praise um so the transparency is like a super super key thing for me is i don't care if i don't care it's it's the same message as the the sort of daily target i don't care if somebody posts on twitter you know after i posted up a losing trade that you know wrecked or you know (laughs) stopped or you know like it's gotta hurt a little bit Nah, nah, like, because that's, that's trading, right? So yeah. anybody, and, and here's the way I view it, is that anybody that tells me, you know, like, wrecked or, you know, like, stopped out or, Those people you know, don't like, trade. what a bad trade. Yeah, exactly, right? That's it. That's the immediate red flag is. And the amount of times I've had to scrape my fingers off the keyboard from typing, like, you're not a fucking trader. Like, <laughs> just smashing these things, the these delete things, key. Yeah, yeah. Like, these things, these things, like, don't matter because to be a trader you need to handle both sides. And I think that this space lacks so much transparency that I think it could benefit from a lot when people are realistic about what they earn on trades, um, what their position sizes are. And I think all of that education just goes to kind of make this space a friendlier and less scammy and more educational space to be a part of. Um, so it's not that I'm kind of saying to everybody, like, take a screen grab of your balance and go and post it on Twitter. (laughs) I was just going to say, I'm going to go post my next $12 (laughs) trade. Yeah. Be like, CBS told me to do this. (laughs) Um, it's, it's really just about, you know, taking it more seriously, using it, using it less as a, as like a betting account and taking it seriously. You know, this is, this is capital. This is, you know, investments and money. Yeah, exactly. And like, we should treat it as such. And I think that being transparent with the people that you want to be transparent with, right? That's the thing is like, if you've got a couple of close friends that you chat about trading with and you start talking about like, I had a really shit day, I'm like, you know, $150 down, then, you know, that's a discussion point. That's like, why did that happen? Like, how can you change it? Um, you know, why did you make that trade? And, And so it opens up that discussion rather than just either bottling it Um, you know, or kind of just pushing it to one side and saying, it doesn't matter. I'll just go again tomorrow. Yeah, you can, sorry. It'll definitely help 
people learn from their mistakes a lot more, especially when you're out there and open with your losers, not only your winners. Because yes, you can learn from your winners, but it also kind of just justifies your trading strategy. When you actually talk about your losers and you're open with them, you can improve on the mistakes that you've been making. Yeah, Um, and I had a, to that point, I had a guy who I posted up a, like I posted up a spreadsheet the other day of my my trades for the day. So all of my winners and losers are, are listed there. Um, and I had a guy um, who it was actually it was the next day and it was on a it was on that tweet that you probably saw where I said like I've just done like 42 trades this morning. Yeah. Um, and he responded and he said, can you post your winners and reason for taking the trades? And I kind of, I like, I just went back to him. I said, like, it's really interesting that you're only interested in seeing the winners. Um, right. Because actually you could probably lose more from seeing my, you could probably learn more from seeing my losing trades than you could from seeing the winners. Um, I, I so think, yeah, it was kind of interesting. I, don't know. That I, I think you can, you can learn more from your losers. I think he wants to kind of see a winning Emulate. strategy. Yeah. Yeah. So I think personally you can you can learn a lot more from your losers, but I, I don't think he was wrong in asking for your winners. I think he's wrong, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> and he got he got the response that he deserved as well. Did you tell him fuck off or No, no, no. I was I was I was kind of like I, I kind of have this tone when I'm when I'm online that I kinda of like don't give a shit, which is kind of which is kind of true. Yeah. Um so it was more just a case of I, I kind of just went along those lines of like it's interesting, you don't want to see the winners, but also I'm not gonna go into detail about how I trade with you right now. There so um yeah. That's fair, that's fair. Um, you know, I kind of want to get into this a little bit because you talked about, we've talked about the, you know, 60 scalps you took in a day uh, and mm-hmm. you have this, you know, one hour chart up. Uh, I know you trade the five second chart. Do you think you could pull that up or do you think you could pull a lower time frame chart up for us just to see what you're looking at on a daily basis? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so like this, uh, what I'll, what I'll pull up is... I'll explain it to you now. I'll explain it to you now. There we go. Yeah. Okay. See, I, 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 we couldn't do this episode without at least talking a little bit about trading and pulling up some charts. Because now that I'm doing these YouTube videos, we can actually see what we're talking about here. Yeah. So, um, essentially, kind of what you're, what you're looking at here is obviously this is, uh, this is the S and P for now. So this is my traditional market setup. Um, you've, you've got me using this, this tiny resolution. Yeah, so, I know. It's hard um, to see. Yeah, so for me this is this is huge on on the monitor that I have here. So I'm not I'm not trading like at this size. Um but essentially what you're looking at is live price. So you're looking at the live price action that's taking place in here. So there's actually no time frame associated to any of this. It's so just as you like can the see tick, in, right? Yeah, exactly. So as you can see in in this section here, you know, we can see this line which is representing price constantly constantly ticking over as price moves yeah um so this is all happening live so essentially i'm i'm trading all day from from essentially four charts um is what i'm trading from Uh, and then this is what this is what derives the the strategy and the approach that i take um but yeah this is this is kind of the view i said to you before this is the this is the control center yeah um and so yeah this the, my my day is at the moment full of full of you know these these brightly colored lines and you know that's kind of what i stare at all day yeah there we go it's it's fascinating to watch just kind of move along in a little bit of a fluid motion yeah. um so i know you're big on renko how does this is different right cuz this is just like a continuous line versus the yeah, so um, let me just, uh, I'll, I'll quickly swap this over as well for you here. So have you kind of can... adapted your strategy here? Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, so this is this is what you, probably most people would associate with me is this yes. kind of classic Renko brick approach. So essentially all I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking a slightly different way of viewing price currently. Um, I tend to swap between, between line and Renko. Because the, the only real real thing that's important to me when I'm trading is um, are, are the peaks. 
and the lows. So they're the only really thing, only things that are really important to me. So I like to use anything that is is jagged, and easily shows me those tops and bottoms. Uh, so Renko is particularly good because everything is is nice and flat, right? Really easy lows and highs, and the same with line. Everything is is really clear in terms of seeing those levels. Yeah, there we go. So really quickly, um, bottom left because you still got the like full lineup. How? What kind of time frame were we looking at there? Um, so this is a this is a twenty tick. So essentially, what you're going to see is that this chart will update. I believe every uh, every uh, two dollars. Okay. The 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 S and P moves. There we go. In current settings, uh, whereas this is this is a lot quicker. This is this is very quick. <laughs> you're a madman. Do you want to give us a little bit of? Because you said you're looking at kind of just like the very peak. Um, yeah. You know, how are you identifying these peaks? Can you give us a little bit of of an alpha drop here? Um, I don't want to. I don't want to push too much. <laughs> no, 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 you're, you're fine. Um, so essentially, um, it, like it's it's no real um, it's, it's no real like secret to anybody that you know. I'm primarily I trade off divergences. Um, so that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the divergences between what my indicators are telling me versus what price is doing. And then I'm trading based off those. And one of the cleanest ways to see divergences is by having a tool that allows you to see very easy tops and bottoms. So when I'm looking for potential potential setups, like down here, for example, we can see we've got the lows in here. Yep. And then we can see on here, right, I've got a higher low. So I know, for example, in this region, this is forming a divergence and this is potentially an actionable tra trade for me. Um, so basically anything that demonstrates those nice clean lows that I can cross compare, you know, quite quickly and easily with, with what I'm seeing on indicators, um, then that's how I'm, that's how I'm sort of formulating my trades. There we go. I, it's still mind boggling to me that you can make 60 trades in a day. So, yeah, oh. I, as I said, I I I don't want to talk about Friday too much because you know I still got some I still got some negative feelings attached to that. But <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was a hectic day, and it's purely the market conditions. As I said, the the times that we are in, they allow for this sort of volatility and action to to be in place. Yeah, there we go. I mean, I've jumped on the one minute chart every now and again, and I'll take mm -hmm. you know three to five trades in a day, and I feel like that's too much. Yeah, yeah so. you're, like, you're like sweating after that. Yeah, like, man, that that's a long day a right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so these, you know, even just like ten to twenty is is mind bog boggling to me. Yeah, and again, you know, it's uh, what I'm looking at doing is I'm I'm looking at just taking the edge off some of these some of these moves. So when we have the sharper sell offs, the sharper the sharper rallies, I'm looking at just catching the top of them, right? Taking taking a little bit on the pullback and then getting out. There we go. So that's kind of the summary of, of how I'm looking to trade, which is the scalping approach. And it's that little and often approach in terms of my gains over a day. Yeah, it really just circles back on the point that these small little gains over the course of a day, a week, a month, a year really start mm -hmm. to add up. Yeah. 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 And did we did we cover that stat last time about the um, the $10,000 $10, bankroll and the compounding? No, we didn't. I don't think. Uh, okay. Mm. Okay. Um, so essentially it is, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I know I'm going to, somebody's going to call me out on this and say, actually, that's not true because I'm probably going to bodge the end figure. But um, it is, if you start with a $10,000 bankroll and you look at making 2% gains per day, every day on your account, then it's around 90 days till that 10,000 is a million. Insanity. I actually do remember us talking about that. Yeah. But, you know, I, I'm glad you brought it up again because I feel like the, you know, the exponential growth and compounding is really lost on some people. So I appreciate yeah. you kind of bringing it up again. <clears throat> Sorry. You know, you think of just even like a 1% growth. Yeah. <clears throat> blow, blows my mind. Uh, yeah. And people forget about that kind of stuff. And it's, I think it's especially hard when you start off because you can hit a couple, you know, a 1% trade. You're like, awesome. And if you're starting with a small bankroll, you're like, wow, I have, 
a hundred and one dollars now. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then to move on to the next day and be like, I have a hundred and two point one. It's just like it. Yeah. It's lost, and it takes some time for you to start seeing that growth. And I think that's where people get discouraged. Yeah, and and you know, I don't want to, I don't want to take us down another conversation right now, but when when that happens uh, and especially in the example that you quoted what happens is we see you know we see the 101 dollar uh, account size and you know everything's okay we see the 103 dollar account size and everything's okay and and the growth is good you know for if you're giving the example of the 100 dollar account size then then the growth is really good you know that's that's a great achievement so far it's a long term it's a long term game it's a marathon and what tends to happen is we'll go back down to 100 dollars because we lost a trade, we may be positioned a bit too strongly, or we've had a couple of losing days in a row, and we're back at hundred dollars. And then what starts to happen is we whack up that leverage, yep. right? We increase the position size, and then all of a sudden it's zero. You want and to get so, back to that hundred and five really quick. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it's it's a long term thing. It's a it's a constant it's a constant marathon. You know, you're always running. Um, but you, it's very. I always try and like rationalize this to people is especially if you're dealing with with you know a, a smaller account size don't do anything that's going to undo your hard work in a matter of seconds because some people spend days and days grinding an account up and if you are ever about to put yourself into a position where you are you are going to undo days weeks months of hard work by doing something impulsive, irrational, because you're pissed off. Um, just, I urge you as much as possible in the moment, think, am I going to regret this in five minutes time? Right. And take your hands off the keyboard. There's always another day. There's always another trade. There's always another opportunity. And somehow people get into that spiral of losing trades where they go from the account has grown steadily over you know a couple of weeks and three four losing trades later they've just spiraled into turning that into zero and somehow the the loss of twenty dollars spirals them to blow a full account oh, um you're so speaking to if, me directly here yeah so if if anybody's in that position like i i really urge you in the moment to have just a, a one piece of clarity even if it's even if it's my voice droning on at you to just have a moment of clarity where you say to yourself do i want to throw everything away in what i'm about to do and the answer is usually no yeah right and just take a breather yeah i i really like that you're bringing that up that the fact that a single loss then spirals into the account going to zero because it's yeah. happened to me i'm sure it's happened to you Anyone who's listening to this who trades, it's probably happened to them at some point or another. So very, very, very wise words from someone who trades for a day living or for a day job and as a living. Sorry. Um, no, 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 you're fine. Yeah, I like the fact you combine those words. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> maybe I'll just refer to it as a day living as well. No? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't start that. <laughs> Um, okay. So, you know, I got two last questions for you. I always like to end with kind of the same questions. And I know we've talked about your outlook for the next 12 months on the last two episodes and what you're most excited for. Is there anything new in the pipeline? And then with all the craziness that's been going on in the world this last month, I'd say, has that kind of shaped your outlook for the next 12 months? No, I, I don't think so. I think, you know, my, my outlook is, is largely the same, you know, it's to continue, is to continue growing my trading accounts. It's to continue doing what I do and, you know, having that heavy focus on the group, you know, having that educational content creation, I'm trying to get a lot more into, into the video side of things. Um, don't do it. Well, when I say the video start type of things, what I, what I really want is, you know, I, I will sit there and I'll record a, you know, a 20 minute educational video where I'm going over the charts. I'm discussing my thought process. I'm doing some post analysis stuff. Um, and what I, what I would really like is like some editing on that video to, you know, maybe like pull out on screen some key points that I'm discussing alongside. So it's, it's easier to absorb as a learner. Um, so kind of, I'm looking to get more into that side there so I can, 
I can begin to create some some cooler stuff. Um, so that's that's really going to be the focus for now. And the only thing the only thing that's changed, you know, is the fact that the markets are giving me a particularly attractive you know place to to trade at the moment because the volatility is on my side. Um, it fits in well. It aligns well with the scalping approach that I have. So it, it's really a case of while everybody else is kind of kicking back, um, you know, I, as I said at the start, I've, I've really been busier than I have been in a, in a long, long time. So it's keep up the pace, continue going until the market gives up, um, you know, and then I can take a breather there. Oh, once you get to that point, there'll be some new goal. I don't think there's ever a break. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And the, and the worst thing was as well is that the one thing that I was really looking forward to is uh, a holiday. Hey, that's there's the none one of thing those anymore. I, was, I know, I know. <laughs> and we were, so we, we usually go to the States every year. Um, so we were, we were looking at coming over again next year. Uh, and as I started to research prices is when, you know, everything started to, you know, spread um but kept looking and uh, and the company that i was i was gonna i was gonna potentially book with has uh has now gone into administration is asking for a for a bailout so oh my you know there's a there's a blessing there as well but it does mean that you know like the rest of the world i'll probably be without a, a holiday yeah i mean you know at least you're doubling down on the work instead of just yeah. kind of not doing anything. Like we talked about at the beginning of the episode, I know a lot of people are just kicking back, watching Netflix, not yeah, using yeah. their time wisely. Yeah, but uh, and, you've doubled and down. Also, I realize as well it, it very much sounded like a first world problem when I said, "Oh yeah, like, I won't get a holiday this year." Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I've given you enough I, 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 shit. I didn't even want to go yeah, for it. I, listen, I'm not. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna try and dig out of it because it's just gonna sound worse. So yeah, I just leave it as as that. <laughs> oh, you're 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 smarter than man than I. I tried to dig myself out of the last last uh, conversational hole that I got myself into with you on the last episode. Ah, yeah, of course. And it just yeah. made it worse. So you're a yeah. smart man for just uh, <laughs> giving up on that one. <laughs> um. Okay. So. I do want to end, you know, I always end with my biggest tip and, uh, you know, the, the kind of theme of this episode was being satisfied with your trading size, your gains, you yourself as a trader. So can you just, you know, double down or circle back on what you think the biggest tip is for kind of being happy with the gains that you're making? So it's a case of take pride in it and always have that association to a dollar value. So always consider your trades as a dollar value. Think about what that dollar value means to you. Is that a significant amount of money? Are you happy with that amount of money for the time that you've put in, for the fact you've clicked two buttons? And it's to always celebrate the achievements. So regardless of size, how much you're taking from the market. Anything that you take from a financial market is is a, an achievement in itself. So it should be celebrated. So I don't want anybody to feel as though they don't have a big enough balance. They don't trade with enough size. Right? You do you, right? Nobody else. And you figure out what works for you and you feel good about it when you achieve things. Love it. I think that's a perfect way to end this episode. I just, I want to add a little tip and also I'm going to say that, you know, I'm going to celebrate my $8 win tonight by getting nice and drunk uh, because you said to, you know, this isn't me. Yeah, yeah, very true. Yeah, so, yeah. so thank I think you. think alcohol was hand in hand with that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate you doubling down on the celebrating your wins because you're right, you know, I, we didn't bring this statistic up, but 90 to 95% of day traders fail over the course of, you know, one year, five years or some shit like that. So for you to be able to take money from the market is a huge success, like you're saying, in and of itself. And you have to reward yourself sometimes. Yeah. And then, yeah. sorry, did you have something else? Because I was going to add one last thing. I, I was I was literally, I was just going to add on when you said um, you have to reward yourself. So it's like, let's say, for example, you're $8. That buys you, that buys you a couple of drinks, right? Um, and those people that, those people that, you know, suddenly end up with a, with a $500 win, 
you know that buys you a that buys you a new games console in a couple of games right so it's always great to rationalize put it into the us dollar amount and then like treat yourself right you've you've done something pretty good like treat yourself put it put make it more real to you right when you're sitting at home and you're playing your ps4 it's a little bit different than the 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 bitcoin that you were seeing on the screen just the day before exactly love it uh, and then lastly i just want to add you know I, i've i've drummed on this a lot and it's that you know everyone on twitter kind of has a motive for what they're doing you know i'm out here trying to drive traffic to my podcast with everything that i do on twitter uh, so the people that you see that are posting these huge P&Ls uh, or these huge account balances, you know, they're they're doing it for a reason. It's not, quote unquote, to share with you and teach you, especially the guys that are just flexing it out of nowhere. Um, and I think a couple names come to mind when when you say that and hear that. Uh, so just understand that there's a reason that they are doing it. They could be trying to drive you to a paid group. They could be struggling in real life and just need that ego boost so remember that when you see that kind of stuff on twitter i was i was gonna i was gonna start clapping <laughs> I, I genuinely i i was nodding along with everything you were saying it was uh it was the great summer it was just falling out of my mouth as i was going i it was, I didn't it know. was wonderful it i don't was know like art. Was... i didn't know where that was gonna end to be honest with you <laughs> when you when you got to the part about you know there's some names that come to mind i was like go on go on <laughs> i almost this wanted is, to name names time. yeah <laughs> but i don't want to make any enemies i could be like totally wrong in like the couple people that i'm thinking yeah. of and they could be trading massive accounts and just doing it just to you know put it out there but you know i i don't want to get into the whole drama thing of it uh, is there anything else that you want you want to say or you want my audience to know before we go? I know you gave your biggest tip, but I always like to give you just that like one last opportunity to say anything. Um, no, like I, I think everything's been summarized in terms of what we've covered over in in the content for this. And you know, as I said, my my biggest thing, my biggest thing is I want everybody to feel like pleased and to feel successful in what they're doing. Um, so that's like the final message is, you know, be, be happy with your success and your success alone. I love it. Great way to end the episode. I'm going to circle back on two things really quickly, just cause I got to get the last word in here. Uh, there's that plugin. There will be a link in the description. And then also guys, Lucas had a ton of success with CBS's educational group and if you've been looking for someone to learn from, I don't think there's anyone on Twitter that's done a better job than him. Uh, so I highly suggest reaching out, DMing him, learning more about the group and potentially joining it. And again, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you sitting down. Uh, this was a long time coming and I'm absolutely honored for you to come on for a third time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's, uh, it's always really, really good to chat to you. Wonderful.